I'm Finlay. Uh, I'm doing a PhD in particle theory and cosmology, and I'm just going into my third year of it. Well, I'd always really loved maths. In secondary school, I liked maths and all three of the sciences. I actually, the course I applied for at university was a natural sciences course rather than a physics course. So in first year, I was able to do some chemistry and some material science and some maths as well, uh, which was really great because I wasn't 100% set in physics at that point. I went through phases of wanting to be lots of things when I was younger. I remember for a while I wanted to be an inventor. Um, whatever that means. For a while I probably wanted to be a musician um, and then I don't know from the age of maybe 16 or so I wanted to be doing this. One thing that's very important probably with lots of subjects but I think especially with maths is that it's very easy to look two steps ahead and think it looks completely impossible. If you look uh, a tenth of a step ahead then it's actually fairly easy and you can do that. Like if I looked at the maths I'm doing now when I was, you know, even in my fourth year of undergrad, I would think, good grief, there's no way I'm not going to apply it to a PhD, I can't do it. So don't underestimate the extent to which it gets easier. Well, one of the things I look at is uh, what we call cosmological inflation, which is a very short period of accelerated expansion in the early universe. We're fairly confident that such a thing happened by looking at various parts of cosmological data, but there's lots we don't know about its properties. The work I've been doing so far has been looking at a model which is a few years old, uh, which tries to unite inflation with dark energy, which refers to the late universe accelerated expansion that we're seeing at the moment. Both of these areas are quite tightly constrained by our data, and if you try to unify them then you're running up against the constraints in each one. So the model I've been looking at, I've basically been trying to test it, doing combination of maths and computation to figure out what this model predicts for the things we observe in the universe. And hopefully in doing that, put some constraints on it or perhaps even rule it out altogether. My PhD doesn't come anywhere close to dominating my life, as I think some people's do. Um, I'm very into music and have been for quite a long time. I play the violin. I like running and cycling, um, rock climbing. I've recently started swimming, but that's not going very well. I would say it's very important to, look, to think about what the course involves, because different physics courses at different universities have different strengths and weaknesses. One of the things which I think is really good about the Nottingham course compared to the course I did is that it's very, um, it, it's got lots of very useful things that you learn in it. It's got lots of computational physics, it's got lots of opportunities to do project work and presentations and these are things which I think are very important skills to have in physics and also in just about anything. There's something to be said for having a bit more uh, experience in some of the slightly more skills-based parts of a physics education. And that's something I think Nottingham does very well.